Okay, next on the agenda is DataGuard. We added a few cool features in 19C that I'm pretty sure you will find very useful. The first feature that I would like to mention is automatic replication of restore points. Previously, when you created a restore point on the primary database, you would have to create it on the standby database manually as well. This now changes in 19C. When you create a restore point on the primary database, it is automatically also created on the standby databases. The information about the restore point is sent via redo to the standby databases, where the restore point is then also created. Since the information flows with redo, it requires that the MRP process is running on the standby database, i.e. it's applying redo. The name of the restore point on the standby databases is suffixed with primary, so you can easily identify them. But there is also a column called replicated, which shows whether or not this is a replicated restore point. In addition to that, it's worth to notice that restore points on the standby database are always normal restore point. So even if you create a guaranteed restore point on the primary database, it will become a normal restore point on the standby database. This is by design because we don't want any interruptions on the standby database that is caused by, for instance, the fast recovery area filling up. The next thing that I would like to mention is automatic flashback. When you is issue a flashback command on the primary database, now in 19C, the standby database automatically follows. The MRP process on the standby database detects that the primary database has flashed back and it causes the standby database to flash back as well. It'll then start a new incarnation and apply the new redo from the standby database to keep up. So all this now happens automatically. Since it is the MRP process that handles the flashback, it also means that redo apply must be running on the standby database in order for it to detect that there is a flashback database and catch up. Now this works on the scope of the entire database, but also on individual PDBs. If for some reason that your standby database doesn't have the required flashback logs to, to issue the flashback database, you would then need to manually restore and recover the data files to bring it in a state where the MRP process can catch up with the redo. If for some reason that you don't want the standby database to automatically flashback, you either have to cancel redo apply or start the database in or open the database, but that requires a license for the active data guard. And the last feature that I would like to talk about is DML redirect. So this is an option or this requires the active data guard license. And when you have it on your standby database, you can issue a DML statement and insert, update or delete. And even though you are doing it on the standby database, which is open and read only, it'll detect that, send the statement back to the primary database where it's executed the change blocks then flows via redo to the standby database. And when that has happened, you gain control of your session on the standby database. So immediately after you've inserted some data on the standby database, you can query the same data because you don't regain control of your session until the same blocks have been applied via redo on the standby database. Now this feature is very suitable for applications that does an occasionally ride from, now, from time to time. But if you have an application that's really doing a lot of DML, it's not suitable to run it on the standby database. I've prepared a demo that show all these three new features. So let's see how it works. First, let's talk about restore point replication. I'm connected here to the primary database. First, I'm gonna create a user, a table and insert a, a row just to have some data that we can use for the demo. And now I'm gonna create a restore point. I've chosen to create a guaranteed restore point and you can see that the replicated column is set to no because we are on the primary database. Now on the standby database, if I issue the same statement, you can see that it has primary suffix to the name. It's listed as a replicated restore point and guaranteed flashback database is set to no. As I mentioned before, this is by design and all replicated restore points are normal restore points on the standby database. Now I open the database just to see that my record 
one is there on the standby database. Now I'm gonna restart the database in mount mode just so we have it in a good state for the next demo. Now I'm gonna insert an additional value to the table and I've broken the database. This was a really bad uh, situation. So I decided to issue a flashback database. I restart and flashback the database. And then I open with reset locks. Now everything is good on the primary database, but let's switch to the standby database and examine the alert log. And as you can see, the standby database has detected that the primary database flashed back and it has two issued a flashback database and it is now keeping up with the new incarnation that was started on the primary database. I can open and see that the record two does not exist anymore on the standby database. Now back on the primary, I'm, issue, I'm inserting another value, 42. And as you can see on the standby database, the, the data is still synchronized to the standby database, so redo apply still works. Now let's have a look at DML redirect. I'm connected to the standby database and I try to insert a statement. It fails because the standby database is in read-only mode. So let's try to use this new feature. And now my insert statement works. So the command is now sent to the primary database. It's executed. The changes flows via redo to the standby. It's applied and I can now query the data. That's very simple. And as expected, the record is still there on the primary database. And finally, let's see that prop restore point command now also propagates to the standby database. So on the primary, I drop my restore point. It no longer exists. And as expected on the standby database, there is no restore point as well. So as you can see, there are a few very useful features added to standby database operations in 19C.